my assignment is to introduce <coughs> Brother Jeremy's text. So I wanted to use this time to introduce some thoughts that will prime our ears to hear this promise. Uh, his text is Revelation 3.5. It says, He that overcometh, the same shall be clothed in white raiment, and I will not blot his name out of the book of life, but I will confess his name before my Father and before his angels. Amen. So I want you to think to yourself, how did you hear that text as it was read? Did you hear it as Jesus being a hard man, or did you hear it as him being the comforter? Your perception of Christ will determine how you hear Jesus' words and your response to them. Jesus, being the good shepherd, holds out a promise to the church in Sardis. His sheep hear his voice, and this promise is the means that he uses to call them out. He still works in this manner even to this very day. Promises are very potent for God's people. The promises of God is what our faith takes hold of, and they are the objectives of what we hope in. We have learned from the scriptures concerning the new creation, promises are superior to threats. They appeal to a person's desire instead of driving them by fear. That being said, there is a valid place for threats. But in Christ, the people of God are more effectually drawn by his promises because we have been given a desire for them and a heart that loves God and his purpose. 2 Peter 1.4 says, Whereby are given unto us exceeding great and precious promises, not weighty threats, precious promises, that by these ye may be partakers of the divine nature. So, can these promises be effectual in Sardis? To those who have already believed and were assessed as being in a deteriorated state, this church was charged with being dead, and Jesus warned them to strengthen the things which remain that, that, that were ready to die. Yeah. And my initial thought about that was, how do you strengthen things that are, that are dead? And I was reminded of Brother Michael when he, um, on his lesson between uh, David and Goliath, remember when it says that David smote the giant and slew him with this, the stone and the sling yeah. and then slew him with the sword. Um, but it was the, the sling and the stone mortally wounded Goliath, and he was as good as dead. And then with the sword, he finished him off. And so I was considering that in our text, this church had suffered a mortal wound, and it was very serious. Unless Jesus intervened by making this assessment known to them, they were as good as dead. But with Jesus' intercession and a response of humility and repentance from the church, that they would strengthen the things which remain, by the grace of God, they could absolutely be recovered by this promise. Amen. We are saved by hope, and hope is born out of these promises. Part of this promise Jesus made was he would not blot his name out of the book of life. This is a very important book. It is imperative that your name be in there if you want to be with the Lord in heaven. Revelation 20.15 says, Whosoever was not found written in the book of life was cast into the lake of fire. And we remember Jesus, uh, when he was here with his disciples, um, he told them, Notwithstanding, in this rejoice not that the spirits are subject to you, but rather rejoice because your names are written in heaven. See, I was, I was ministered to by Sister Rachel as she sang. Because, because our sins are blotted out and our names are written in heaven, we have reason to rejoice. He doesn't, you don't have to give him a reason to blot your name out. He's blotted out our sins. And her countenance was a blessing. She believed what she sang. So how are you hearing this word for, from, from Jesus? For a long time... I personally heard it only as a threat. Like Jesus was in heaven with this divine bottle of white out, like just ready to blot my name out. Like, and it was not very 
helpful to think of it in that way. Then there is no doubt that there is, this, this is a stern warning to those that need to repent. And it, it is a very real danger that your name can be blotted out if you remain obstinate and stiff-necked toward the Lord. But it still isn't preeminently a threat. It is a promise. Listen again to it. It says, He that overcometh, the same shall be clothed in white raiment, and I will not blot out his name out of the book of life, but I will confess his name before my father. What did Sardis hear? We hear some people speak as they don't even know if their name is written in the book of life or not. At least Sardis can know and be comforted that their name is still in the book of life. <laughs> it's still there. Jesus hadn't cut them off. There was still hope if they would humble themselves under the mighty hand of God. Amen. And what do, what do the faithful believers hear? They hear Jesus reassuring the saints that they are safe. For the faithful ones that, were, that remained, there is no reason to, for them to fear that their name would be blotted out with the wicked. Even, and we don't have to fear either, even when we're surrounded by a dead environment sometimes. The righteous will not perish with the wicked. Jesus' ass assessment demands a response. The church in Sardis did not have to remain in the state it was in. Uh, whenever anyone is assessed by the Lord, if um, you're not pleased with your assessment, you don't have to remain in that condition. Amen. There is grace to be had to repent and get out of it. Amen. And I was reminded of um, Peter here. When he was sifted by the devil and had um, denied the Lord, but with a look from Jesus, he went out and wept bitterly because it hurt him to consider what he had done. But after Jesus' resurrection, the women, they came to the tomb. And in Mark 16, 5 through 7, it says, And entering into the sepulcher, they saw a young man sitting on the right side, clothed in a long white garment, and they were affrighted. And he said unto them, Be not affrighted. Ye seek Jesus of Nazareth, which was crucified. He is risen. He is not here. Behold the place where they laid him. But go your way. Tell his disciples and Peter that he goeth Amen. before you into Galilee. Amen. And Peter. Amen. Peter wasn't lost. And God wanted Peter to be assured that he yeah. would be received Amen. by Jesus. If for some reason you find yourself in need of repentance, do so with haste and Jesus will receive you. There is no reason for anyone to stand before God ashamed. All who overcome will be examples of his glorious working. The people of God need to hear these promises and these assurances to help us to overcome. And the promises is, is only made to overcomers. It is to the faithful that are counted worthy. The sheep who Jesus is calling out, they will overcome. Mm -hmm. Not only will he not blot out your name, he will also confess it before his father and his angels. Um, this word confession, as I consider it, this is not a mere formality or an unfelt boring ceremony. <laughs> This confession is not just a statement. It's not just reciting facts. Confession is a deep, heartfelt conviction that you express. Right now, we confess Christ before men. Uh, Matthew 10, 32 says, Whosoever therefore shall confess me before men, him will I also before my Father which is in heaven. And then again in Luke 12, 8. And also I say unto you, whosoever shall confess me before men, him shall the Son of Man also confess before the angels of God. Mm. Yes, I was considering how we do confess Christ um, in all areas of our lives, whether we're meeting with the brethren or where, whether we're out in the world. 
But I was thinking about how zealous we get when we meet together and we consider Christ and confess him to one another. As we fellowship together, our hearts burn within us, Amen. and we are compelled to speak of the one who loved and saved Amen. us. So do we think that Jesus would be any less zealous in presenting his bride to the Father and before his angels? No, he will do so with great joy. This, confe this confession is, is a formal introduction to God, but is not just like a line of people, you know, father me, so-and-so, and then to the next person. This confession uh, will involve Jesus sharing and manifesting his investment in the fruit of his intercession that worked in us. This confession is personal to us, but it dawned on me anew how this is, um, it's more personal even so to Christ. Mm -hmm. It's a, this confession is, is a genuine heartfelt manifestation that he counted it worthy to lay down his life for the church and that he is pleased with his bride. There is nothing in this world that is worth forfeiting that confession. Amen. Charlatan, fake, fraud, hoaxer, phony, imposter, quack, sham. These are all words that Jesus did not use when he was talking about his church. He said, he that overcometh. The same shall be clothed in white raiment. Now, he's talking to this church here, and he rebuked them. But he didn't leave them in a state of rebuke. Now, in my text, this is, we're getting to the good part now. He's encouraging them. Do you, do you feel like you're not worthy? There's times where you feel like you're just not up to the standard. Well, Jesus is up to the standard. Amen. Yeah. Those with him yeah. are overcomers. See, he can pick you up and strengthen you. Yes. He can make you worthy yeah. to stand before your God. He can make you not ashamed. Yeah. Yes, yeah, I understand, brother. On our own, we should be ashamed. Mm -hmm. We should fear. If seen correctly, it should strike fear yeah. into the hearts of men who without Christ Jesus, but at the same time, we have joy because of Christ. We have joy that we're not alone. We're not on our own. I mean, who doesn't fear? Dead men don't fear. And if you're, if you're alive, I mean, that, that's why we have fear. God's given us this sense of, you know, you're like on edge when you're not exactly sure. But see, Christ can make us sure. It says, fear not. Why, why can't he say, fear not? Because of Christ. Why can't it say, overcomer? I, I Googled overcomer just to see what that said. And, you know, when you Google stuff, it comes up with all kinds of different things. But I was surprised to see that when I Googled, Googled overcomer, it was connected to Christians. That's the first thing that came up to it. A lot of Christians and a lot of different things that had to do with Christians. This is, a, this is how Christ, he assessed his people. He's, those who are going to be with him in glory are overcomers. See, this is, how God, this is how Christ speaks about his people. The Lord, he, the Lord Jesus, he's helping us. He's helping us to see this now before it's too late. That we, we need to be alert. We need to be ready. We need to distance ourselves from the world. Because it, it is going to come to an end. And those who are not overcomers aren't going to be with him. Only overcomers are going to be with him. So he that overcometh... There's promises that goes along with that. Yeah. That's what I'm talking about when I say we're getting to the good stuff now. Yeah. Brother Gene, was, he, he was given the, some tough words he had to, 
had to preach here, but now it continues on, and we're giving good stuff that we can we can be with our God and be not ashamed because of Christ Jesus. He's teaching the church that now is the time to get ready. It's not over yet. Yeah. See, you may be ashamed of some things you've done in the past. You may not be real happy with yourself. Maybe just yesterday. I don't know. But today is the day. Today is the day to align yourself. Maybe today is the day Christ is coming back. I praise God if he does. I hope he does come back today. Yeah. Let him come back while we're having this high time, these good meetings. Yeah. But, there, but these meetings, if we go out those doors and he hasn't come back, it's a good time to continue with him. Yeah. It's a good time to stay with him. It's a good time. See, we don't have to pretend with Christ. Yeah. He knows us. He, know, he knows us. We don't have to pretend. We don't have to. You see, in front of men, we, we don't want to reveal everything because we have this flesh to deal with. We're ashamed of the flesh. We're ashamed of the things, that, the baggage that comes with it. But see, with Christ, he knows us. We can, be, we can be honest and upfront with Christ, and he can make us to be overcomers. We can have the mind of Christ. We can think like him. But it takes work. Now is the time. It takes focus, and that's what he's doing with us. If you're focused on the wrong thing, that, it could crush you. You could be overwhelmed, and it would just crush you. But see, what Christ is showing us here is if you focus on the right thing, I can make you an overcomer. Let me take you and show you what I have in store for you. It's worth fighting for. It's worth denying the flesh. It's worth going through trials and tribulation. It's worth people hating you. He's so good to us. He says, look, I'm just going to be up front with you. They hated me first. Do not be surprised if they hate you. And when I talk about hate, I mean, they don't want to cut your heads off. If you're, never, if you're not living in a country that can protect you, they want to slew every single one of you. And don't be surprised. Brother, we have people today are surprised because of people being slaughtered because they're Christians. People are just ignorant of the way of the heathen. They, if you are a true Christian, they hate you. They hate just being around you. You make them sick. They would like nothing else just to, get, to kill you and get rid of you. So don't be surprised about that. Noah, remember Noah, a preacher of righteousness? It was because he saw God that he was able to be sustained, that he was able to be an overcomer. It wasn't easy for Noah. It's not going to be easy for us. He's, he's like a picture of what, we're going to, what it's going to take for us. He, he had to build, go to work. He had to build an ark to save himself and his family. Brethren, do you think that we're going to be called to do anything less? But we're going to have to do some work. We're going to have to prepare and be ready. People that aren't preparing and aren't ready, they're going to be taking, they're taking this half-heartedly. They're, taking, they're not going to make it. God spoke to Noah and he'll, spoke, he'll speak to you too, but you got to hear. He spoke to Noah and it made him ready on the day. Noah was ready. When the day came, and we will be ready too. Overcomers will be ready. But no, do not think for a second that you can continue in ungodliness and be accepted. We're called out of that. We're called into righteousness. Overcomers are not quitters. The church of God are not quitters. They're winners. Nobody's going to get to glory and be a loser. Amen, yeah. Only winners get to glory. Yeah. It's not over till it's over. Jesus is doing a work right now. He's preparing a people right now. Yeah. Amen. We have this short time carved out for the church to shine for God. See, it's, God's name is on the line here. 
No matter what it looks like right now, in the end, the Christians will be the overcomers. It doesn't look like it now. It, may, it looks pretty bleak sometimes. But don't, don't, be, don't be taken back by this. The Christians are they're going to be the overcomers. They're the ones who are going to be in glory. It's not over till it's over. It's not going to be easy to overcome, but it's going to be worth it. It says, clothed in white raiment. Why is that important? Why does that sound so good? Because nobody's going to get to glory and have any spot or blemish and stand before God and stay. And stay. You have to be clothed in white raiment. And this is a promise that we have. Those who overcome will, not maybe, will be clothed in white raiment. You'll, you're not going to be ashamed. That's a point. We're going to be accepted by our God. Jesus doesn't just say, you better overcome. We will. We are. We're going to be overcomers. He's opening up the church to the spoils of victory here. He's showing us what we're, he's giving us a glimpse of what we have in store for us. What he has in store for us. We're not just fighting to be fighting. See, in the world, they may make promises. And you may work really hard, and in the end, yeah, so we broke the contract with you. No, whatever, take me to court, sue me. That's what the, that's what the world says. So sue me. Have fun with that. And you take off. But see, this is not how Christ is. When he says something, you can take it to the bank. He's going to do it. He's not just saying this just to sound good. Yeah. This white raiment is real. Yes. Amen. He's preparing his people to return to be with their God, to be ready. He's not, he's not just making us try to feel good. You know, people in the world, they do that. They just tell them whatever they want to hear just to make them happy. See, that's not how Christ is. Right. He's not just making us happy. He's not just trying to make us feel good. Yeah, I know things aren't working out well for you down there, and I'm just going to say some things to make you feel good while you go through all your trials. That's not how it is. The Lord Jesus is really shining light on the situation, how it really is. A real possibility of not being ready is also being known here. The fact that he says your name won't be blotted out, well, also it could be blotted out. That's real. That does really loom over the church, but it's not a bad thing for him to tell us this. He's make, it's a good thing, right? Sister Nikki just said, he's, it depends on how you look at it. It could be bad if you're not repenting. If you say, you know, I really don't care what he says, I'm going to continue on my way. But it, be, it could be good if it, it changes something in you. It gets you, it gets you going to, to, be, to live righteous and holy and ready. It's a good thing. The church still has life in it. This is why Christ is speaking to ignite that life. To make, see, this is what he does. He gives life. That, that's who Christ is. He speaks life. He gives life. He is life. Amen. Only Christ can do it, and he's doing it. He's made, he's, those who have an ear. Well, we heard this before. Brother Justin talked about having an ear. Did you take a class on having an ear? Did you come to a day, a point in time in your life, you think, well, you know what? I think I might want to get one of those ears. <laughs> he gave that ear to you. He made you to have an ear. You have an ear, you have a desire, you have a love. He put that in you. This is a confidence builder, brother. In Jesus, we have these promises of life. Whosoever will save his life shall lose it, and whosoever will lose his life for my sake shall find it. Matthew 16, 25. That's a promise. Don't worry about your life here. 
Don't worry about what men think of you. Think more about what God thinks about you. We, the church, we seek approval of Christ. It's the approval of the world that some desire. See, God has made it. He, he, he's made us like this to want approval. That's not wrong. To want to be accepted. That's not wrong. It's where you seek that acceptance. It's where you desire the approval. See, if you don't have an ear to hear this and you can't see it, you're going to be, you're going to be looking for men to give you an approval. And we know how that works out. We've seen Christians being lifted up by men one day, and they lift them up and they crush them the next day. See, that's not how Christ is. That's not how our God is. As we seek to lose our life here and now while we desire the approval of Christ, he will not deny us there. We cannot and will not lose our, we will not lose in the end as we stay with Jesus. We won't. It's as we go looking for acceptance by the world, that's, that's where we lose. Whosoever therefore shall be ashamed of me and my words in this adulterous and sinful generation of whom also shall the Son of Man be ashamed when he cometh in the glory of his Father with the holy angels, Mark 8, 38. On the flip side, if you're not ashamed of him now, well, he's not going to be ashamed of you then. If we abide in him now, when he appears, we will have confidence and not be ashamed before him at his coming. 1 John 2.28 talks about that. There's going to be a lot of people that are going to be ashamed when Christ returns. And it's going to be a fearful time for them. Just think of this great and glorious time when we will not be ashamed when we stand before God. When you're going through your trials. I'm talking about you're going to have trials, you're going to have hard times. But what makes it easier, not easy, but easier, it takes a little bit of the, the edge off of it, is to think about what it's going to be like when you get to glory. And you're not going to be ashamed. Amen. He's going to call us out by name. Talk about acceptance. Yeah, yeah. Approval. This is the manner of God. He, Jesus will personally confess us before the Father and before the angels. Yeah. What can compare to that? The, well, that's what Christ is doing right now. He, he's, he's stirring us up. He's getting us ready for this. He's, he's talking to a church that, that they got a good start, but then they got to the point where it's just kind of all show. And he's, he's, he's speaking to them saying, don't be fake. You don't have to be fake with me. Be real. You know, you may not be accepted like you was before, before men, but you don't have to be fake with me. Drop it. Take off all the pretty clothes and all the things that are accepted by men and come before me and, and I will make you acceptable before the Father. We know when Jesus says something that he means what he says. Some things people say, we can't trust it. People today say all kinds of things, but it's, it's not real. It's phony. But the church does not want to ignore Jesus. It would be good for us to ignore the world and what they have to say. But we do not want to ignore Jesus. We have too much on the line to be moved by our feelings or by what men say of us and about us. Because men are wishy-washy. Yeah. They're all over the place. They say one thing one day, next day they don't. Christ isn't like this. The word, this word is to the church. See, some people won't hear this. They have too many distractions, too many things that they got themselves busy doing.
But this is to the church. He's not just talking to anybody. He's talking to those who have an ear to hear. The world will continue to balk at God. They'll say things. But let them speak. Let them say what they want to say. You know what? I mean, it does upset you. I understand that. But this doesn't have to bog you down. Let them, let them say what they want to say because there's going to come a time where it's all going to come to an end. We don't expect the world to listen to what the Spirit says because it can't. The world doesn't have ears to hear. So don't be all upset when everybody's not hearing this. Rejoice when you find a brother or sister who can come along and hear it with you. That's what you want to be excited about. That's what you want to rejoice about. Don't get bogged down by the world. The fact that our names won't be blotted out, that's the blessing that we want to focus on. Not what the world says and what the world's doing. Because this possibility is not only something that sounds good, it's real. Only those who are written in the Lamb's Book of Life will be with God, Revelation 21, 27. That's real. You, you're going to be with your God for eternity. What does this world have to offer that can, can, can stand up against acceptance by the Father and all the angels for eternity? Is there any, can you think of anything that you could put a, a value on that is more valuable than that? We're all going to die. Who, who cares if we store up all the treasures in the Lord, but it's all going to be gone. But this is, will never go away, to be accepted by the Father. Amen. The possibility of our names not being blotted out, but Jesus is saying it's worth fighting for. Yes. It's worth fighting for now because eternity, it, will not, it, it cannot be even compared to this vapor that we're going through now. In Christ we have a hope that sustains us now. But then when we get there, we're not going to have to be hoping anymore. We're going to be there. We're going to be over, we're going to be, we are going to be the overcomers. We are going to be given white raiment, clothed to be acceptable for our, our God. And it's going to be worth everything that we had to go through. Amen. Now we all have different measures of what we have to go through, what we're fighting for, what we're fighting against, our own flesh. But believe this, when you're there, it's all going to be worth it. What does it mean to you to have your, written, your name written in the book, acceptance? This is really what we all long for, is acceptance. That's really what we want, isn't it? This is what many people, they go out on Facebook and try to get as many people to like them. And they get on there and only eight people like them. Well, that's me. <laughs> and you're like, eight people? <laughs> well, now we're going to have the Father and all the angels like us. Amen. So what does this mean to you? Jesus says, you will be rewarded. I will confess your name before the Father and all the angels. This just sounds good to you, doesn't it? Jesus is not, does not say something he cannot do. When he, whatever he says, he can back it up. So let, let that just sink into us. Your name will, will be called out as acceptable before the Father and all the angels. He's going to call you, Brother Tony. Tony. You're with my son. You're accepted. You're accepted. I ac the Father's going to say, I accept you in, in all these angels. And there's going to be like angels. You can't even see the end of them. They all accept you too. Many seek it from men, but it's short-lived. This world's passing away. The praise of men is passing away. 
And as much as it may feel good to the flesh, and it does, hey, we can be serious about this and be real. We don't have to pretend the flesh really likes to be accepted by men. It wants to hear the praise of men. But we can, we can, we can know it's only short-lived. Like Brother Matt said, we can tell our, our flesh, you're not in control here. You're, we're crucifying you today, and we're going to use you as an instrument of righteousness until I don't need you anymore. Because this is the manner of sin. It, it only lasts for a short time. It's real. Yes, it's real. And people say, well, I just want to do what feels good to me. And if you don't, and if you don't let me do what feels good to me, you're a hateful person. That's a, that's a world. That's flesh. Choosing rather to suffer affliction with the people of God than to enjoy the pleasure of sin for a season. Hebrews 11.25. This is how scripture talks about it. It's just pleasure for a season. Yes, sin is enjoyable to the flesh. It brings pl pleasure to the fl flesh for a season. But it will not last. God will give recognition to those who overcome this world that will last for eternity. What will we give up for that? Divine acceptance for eternity. Never ending glory and praise to our God for eternity. And we're not going to have to fight flesh anymore. We're not going to have enemies to fight anymore. It's just going to be glory to our God. Praise to our God. Everything we desire, everything that we really want, that's what it's going to be for eternity. Nothing can compare to the, this grand and glorious day to be with our God. So, brother, I pray and I exhort you to be strong. Let nothing stand in our way of obtaining the prize. Let nothing in this world even the riches of this world, see it for what it is, passing away. Continue thinking about your name being confessed before the Father and all the angels. Whenever you're tempted, compare. Make a comparison. Say, my name confessed before the Father and the angels. Real temptation. I, I see it as a real temptation compared to my name being confessed to the Father and angels. All of a sudden, that temptation doesn't seem as good as it did before. Amen. So continue to think about that. The time is coming. The end is near. We do not want to be caught unaware. This is how good our Lord is. He's making us ready. Amen. Trials will come, but they will come to an end. Hard times will come, but they will come to an end. Tribulation will come, but it will come to an end. None of it's going to last. And none of it can compare to what it's going to be like when we're accepted before our God. Thank you, brother.